Hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to be reviewing our hypothesis test comparing two sample means uh, using the t-distribution. Uh, so we'll be using textbook page 503 number 8, as you can see here. So we'll review the test itself, um, how to do that on the calculator as well, with the p-value, and then writing a confidence interval. Um, so I already highlighted our two samples here. So we have elementary school teachers in yellow, secondary in green. Um, so let's start off with our conditions that need to be met in order to use the t-distribution. Uh, so remember, both of our samples need to be randomly selected. And it does tell me here that they were both uh, uh, from random selection. So that condition's met. Our samples need to be less than 10% of the population. Um, so we're looking at a large school district here. So it doesn't tell me how many teachers there are total in the school district. Um, but if we have 26 here, uh, if I multiply that by 10, um, that would be 260. So that's 10% of 260. So one assumption that we're going to be taking going into using this test is that that condition is met, that the school district has at least 260 and here 240 secondary um, school teachers. Um, if I'm looking at all teachers, then obviously there's more than 260. But in this specific district, that's one assumption that uh, we need. And we're also assuming that the variable, in this case, the salary, uh, the salaries are normally distributed. Um, so it doesn't mention that the variable is normally distributed. So those are two assumptions that we're going to be taking bef uh, while doing this test. Okay, so if I read my question here, can it be concluded that the mean uh, of the salary of elementary school teachers is greater than the mean of the secondary teachers? Okay, so for a minimal hypothesis, we're going to set them equal to the mean of the elementary is equal to the mean of the secondary school teachers, which means my alternative, we want to show um, is elementary greater. So the mean of elementary school teachers is that greater than the mean of secondary school teachers, or you could just call it one and two. Okay, so if I'm using my T distribution, because my samples are um, only 26 and 24, so it's less than 30, and it also tells me the sample uh, standard deviation, so not population, so we're gonna have to use T. Okay, so since it's greater, this is going to be uh, right tail test, so on the greater than side. Okay, so if I want to find my critical value, remember my degrees of freedom will be the smaller of the two samples. So in this case, the smaller one is the 24. So n minus one, which so 23 degrees of freedom with an alpha of 0 0.05, as it tells me here. Okay, so if I go to my table, t distribution, Okay, so degrees of freedom, 23 will be this column here. Okay, and then if I go over to one tail, so this top column, 0.05, that's this column here. So one tail, 0.05, if I go down to 23, it looks like we have 1.714. Okay, so 1.714 will be my critical value. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate my test value. So my formula is here. Okay, so I subtract my sample mean. So it looks like my means are uh, 40,256 and then 45,633. Remember, we're saying our means are equal. So that'll just be zero. Okay, and then remember each standard deviation squared over its respective sample size. So for elementary school teachers in yellow, it tells me standard deviation is 3912. 40, so that's squared. Elementary schools are 26. And then for uh, secondary, it's uh, 5533 is my standard deviation squared over 24 is the sample size. Okay, so we can go ahead and type that in. Okay, so I'll go ahead and type this in a fraction. So the 40. 256 minus the 45633. Okay, I'll do square root. Uh, you don't need to put the bottom in a fraction. You could just use uh Pam that says to do a division before addition. So if you just put the division of each of those, it'll do those first before adding them. Um, but just to make it look exact, I'll type it in the fraction. So 39, 12.40 squared over the 26, and then we'll add on another fraction, 55, 33 squared over the 24. So it looks like that'll give us about 1.92. 
Okay, so finish up this hypothesis test that 1.92 is one uh, more than 1.7. So I'll show then. So 1.92, so our answer is going to be yes, we do have enough evidence uh, to conclude that the salaries for elementary are. Uh, so we, uh, I could say we have enough evidence to show the mean of elementary is in fact greater than the mean of, so there is a difference. Um, so we could reject our null hypothesis, though. It is true that the elementary school is greater than Seattle, uh, than secondary. Okay, so if we go, remember, if we go to check this on the calculator, if we go to stat, go over to our tests. Okay, so we have two samples here. So we have two samples with Z and T. So we're in the T distribution. So number four here. I already had this typed in. So the 48, 256, 39, 12. Uh, in each of those. So if you type in, put elementary first, secondary second, type in your respective mean sample size and standard deviation uh, greater than is was our alternative hypothesis. Okay, oops, uh, let me go back here. So just click enter at the bottom. Okay, and you can see we keep clicking the ones. Um, and you can see that we should, in fact, get the same 1.90 So That was correct. Okay, so the p-value tells me is about 0 0.03, 0 0.03, that 8 will bring it up to so 0 0.031. So if you wanted to use the p-value, uh, you can compare that directly to alpha. Remember, if if you select it not equal to for two tail tests, you don't have to it'll split it in half or double it for you. So you know, just compare the p directly to alpha, regardless of what test it is. So if I compare this to 0 0.05, this is less than 0 0.05. Okay, so remember, if it's a lesser area than the tail, so if my tail here is 0 0.05, um, 0 0.03 is a smaller amount, right? So just every color. So 0 0.03 will be just a fraction. So it's a smaller amount than 0 0.05. So that's definitely in the critical region. So same conclusion that we do have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so for the confidence interval. Um, okay, so if I want to write a confidence interval, let's say we want to do, we'll keep that same 5% of the tail. So if I do 5% of that tail, 5% of that tail, um, that would be the middle 90%. So we'll do a 90% confidence interval. Okay, so uh, we subtract the means. So I subtract the same thing at the top there. So subtract the two means. Okay, and then I can add and subtract off. Um, so my T values, so I could go back to my table once again. Okay, so confidence interval 90% will be this column. So the same column. Um, so it looks like you'll have the same as uh, 23 degrees of freedom. Uh, so it looks like it'll be the same 1.714, but depending on whatever confidence level, you just choose that uh, column. So I'll use the same 1.714 and then 39, 12.40 squared over the 26 plus 55, 33 squared over the 24. Okay, so if I go ahead and type that in, I'll do the minus first, doesn't matter which one I do first. I'll just change it to addition. Again, just to show you, you don't need to do the fraction. I'll just do that squared over the 26. And then I'll add on 55, 33 squared over the 24. Again, I'll go back down and copy and paste that and just change it to addition. Okay, so it looks like my interval will be from 282, and this is money, so I'll do 71 cents, uh, difference of the means, um, and then 49.63.29. Okay, so kind of a wide interval, but uh, notice that zero, we, we said that there is a difference, right? We rejected the fact that they're the same, so there is a difference. Um, so zero should be in there because zero means no difference, and we're rejecting that, right? So there is a difference of about 200. Uh, $82, so about $5,000 is the difference in salaries. And you can do it in the calculator, we go back to tests. Uh, if you go down to two sample interval, Z and T again, so T interval, it already had this typed in. Um, if you already typed it in for the test, so you don't have to change anything, I could change it to 0 0.90. Um, you can see it won't give us the same interval. Um, it's 325 to 49.20. So it's about, uh, you can see 49.20. 
um, and 325. So you can see the interval is uh, smaller uh, just because it's using both sample sizes here. Here for degrees of freedom, we only use a smaller one, so we don't account for what the other sample size is. Uh, so the calculator, since it uses, uh, we told it both sample sizes, it's a little more exact. So it's about $43 tighter in each direction, so it's a little more exact interval. Um, but using the formula, that's um, it matches our conclusion that there is, in fact, a difference of about $300 to $5,000. Um, okay, before I go, I just wanted to show, just in case, uh, the answers to the stations. Uh, I changed the power one just slightly. Um, in class, it was like a negative five. Um, and you can see by the t-distribution, all these are about one to two. So if it's five standard deviations away, it's going to be clearly enough evidence for that one. Um, and the p-value was point something, e negative six. Remember that e is the scientific notation. So if you move the decimal back six places, you'll get like 0. 0.0000. So that's going to be smaller than any whatever alpha is. So clearly, it'll be in that critical region. So that's enough evidence. But if you want to check your answers to the other stations, there are each of the answers. All right, so that'll be it for this video.